Lecture 5. Monarchies or Tyrannies. Rule by 1. The most common forms of government up until relatively recent times has not been democracy or rule by the many, but rather monarchy or rule by one. A monarchical system of governance needs not only to be ruled by a king, since the Greek word monos means one, not king. Due to the prevalence of of democracies in our present times, there are many misconceptions on the quality of states that are ruled essentially by one person. Like democracies and aristocracies, ruled by a few, a monarchy can be either ruled justly, unjustly, or, as is more often the case, somewhere between the two. A monarch may exhibit great benevolence by concerning himself the welfare of all, a monarch may be self-oriented by concerning himself exclusively with his own self-interest while not being brutal. A monarch may also be a tyrant who takes pleasure in violence and squashing his subjects. Realizing the many forms a monarchical system of governance can take, and has taken throughout history, helps to see that a monarchy is not, necessar is not necessarily the worst form of government. On the contrary, there have been, and still are, monarchical forms of government that have been just and even well-liked by the majority of its citizens. A Positive Approach to Monarchy in Plato's Republic The Ship Parable In the Republic, Plato brings out deficiencies of a democracy by comparing governance to a ship. In Chapter 6, Plato describes a ship whose sailors have drugged the captain and taken command of the ship. None of the sailors have skill in navigation, only the navigator does. The sailors imprudently ignore the navigator and his knowledge of navigation, preferring to guide the ship according to majority opinion reached by consensus among themselves. What do you think Plato is trying to teach with respect to democratic rule? To aid you in answering this question, reflect on the following comparison and I include this in the transcript and also as a screen as the back of uh, what I'm talking about, the background. And there you see there's a ship, and a ship has crew and a navigator, and that corresponds to a political system. The crew corresponds to democratic rule by opinion, and the navigator corresponds to monarchical rule by knowledge. When the crew rules, they steer the ship to their peril, according to uncertain opinion. However, when the navigator rules, the ship is guided according to objective laws that have taken years of study and reflection to master. Who do you wish the, to guide the ship, representing a political state? What are the merits and deficiencies of this comparison? The Physician Parable. In Chapter 1 of The Republic, Plato compares a political ruler who has knowledge and not a mere opinion of politics, to a physician, he asks. No physician, insofar as he is a physician, considers his own good in what he prescribes, but the good of his patient. For the true physician is also a ruler, having the human body as a subject, and is not a mere money-maker. That has been admitted. Do you agree with Plato, or are medical doctors only concerned with making a profit even at the cost of their patients? Would you go to see this type of doctor? During Plato's time, a medical doctor was expected to practice his science in accordance with the Hippocratic Oath by, and I quote, benefiting his patients according to his greatest ability and, adjust, and judgment and by ensuring that he will do no harm or injustice to them. Is it possible for a monarch to act also like a physician by taking a similar oath in relationship to his subjects? For this to happen, according to Plato, the monarch must be a philosopher who, like a physician, has spent much time studying his science and who has a great love for wisdom, in other words, for political reality taken as a whole. Negative Concept of Monarchy The notable English Catholic Lord Acton is unfortunately often remembered for his opposition to the doctrine of papal infallibility promulgated by Vatican Council I. In a letter to the Anglican Bishop Creighton, he expressed his opposition to papal authority by famously asserting, Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are always bad men. Do you agree with his assertion? 
When the papacy is rightly understood as not automatically sanctifying the office holder, but rather as a sign of unity and personal means by which Christ and his truth speaks to us, I do not agree with Acton. However, at the same time, his words may ring true when applied to politics. Power corrupts, absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely. Corrupt monarchy. Aristotle, two types of tyrants. The Greek philosopher Aristotle was once Plato's student. Later in his life, Aristotle became a tutor of Alexander the Great, responsible for creating a vast Greek empire that at one point reached even to India and into India. In his politics, Aristotle describes the traits of a corrupt king or a tyrant who uses oppressive means. Such a tyrant will not allow literary associations and clubs. He puts to death men who are influential. He makes sure that when people meet, they do so in public so that he knows what their meetings are about. Some tyrants will even inc deliberately encourage fights among his subjects. In this, they will, in this way, they will be less likely to fight him, causing his subject to mistreat, mistrust one another, will also make it less likely for them to band together in order to overthrow him. The tyrant also might war with another nation in order to ensure his citizens direct their frustration away from him and to raise the likelihood his citizens will want him to lead them against the perceived threat. A tyrant will dislike and punish anyone who is not willing to flatter him since such a man is more likely to voice opposition to his tyrannical rule. Aristotle also describes a more devious tyrant who uses less obvious oppressive means. Such a tyrant pretends that he's not wasting money. He therefore gives a false account of how he spends the money he receives. He strives to appear kind, compassionate, respectful to men of merit, and religious, when in reality is only concerned about himself. Machiavelli's approval of Aristotle's second type of tyrant. Niccolo de Bernardone di Machiavelli was an Italian philosopher famous for his, for his work, The Prince, which he dedicated to the ruler of Florence, Lorenzo de Medici. In this work, Machiavelli writes approvingly of a prince who rules with characteristics that Aristotle disparagingly writes about. Machiavelli encourages a prince to be like Aristotle, deceptive tyrant, who on the surface appears kind and good, but actually is ruthless and cunning. And in a transcript, I provide you with a very important excerpt from Machiavelli's The Prince on this specific point. Conceptions and Assumptions About Monarchies Below are six common conceptions on monarchical governments, and that's provided in your transcript, and I'll read them for you. In light of this lecture, what assumptions underlie these concepts? To what extent are these assumptions true? To what extent are they false? And the assumptions are as follows. Monarchies are the least common form of government. Monarchies, monarchs are always tyrants. Monarchies are never legitimate. Monarchies are the least popular form of government. Monarchies have no good qualities. Monarchies are the worst form of government. God bless.